What's up, Pokemon Pit NBZ here, bringing you a Black 2 White 2 battle. My first Black 2 White 2 battle upload onto this channel, and I thought we might as well just kick it off in style. I'm using a Ditto, I'm using some cool stuff like Haxorus with Superpower, Roosting Hydreigon, Stealth Rock Cabalion, Ice Punch Conkelda, loads of loads of cool stuff. And I uh, got a game here, uh, and we'll see how it goes down. So I'm gonna lead off with my goat, and my goat is a Stealth Rock and goat because it got Stealth Rock, and I think that's cool. So I thought I want to use it, and I like the goat in general, so might as well go with that. And fortunately for me, he's leading off with an Azelf, and he has Taunt on the Azelf, so he's gonna Taunt me straight away, uh, lock me down, make me unable to do my Rock setup, and I'm gonna have to switch out to something. I decided to go into my Dragonite simply because I know he's gonna go for rocks of his own. If he's a Taunt Azelf set, if he's a lead Azelf set, he is definitely gonna get rocks down. So that's exactly what he does. You turn straight out. Uh, unfortunately, breaking my multi-scale. It actually gets a crit there because, uh, as you could probably tell, it wouldn't have done that much had uh, uh, it not been a crit. Because multi-scale is active and it's not very effective and it's unstabbed and he probably has no attack investment or something. But it does a significant amount still, I guess, for a, a U-turn with multi-scale active. None of that matters, of course, because I just killed a Terrakion with an Outrage. So that works out perfectly. This is a choice banded Dragonite with, uh, obviously, multi-scale and superpower, but also, you know, Outrage and all the other good things. Unfortunately for me, though, uh, he brings in Jolteon, which is clearly going to outspeed me, and uh, he has HP Ice, so... That's kind of uh, kicking the nuts because I can no longer use Dragonite. Locked into Outrage, couldn't switch. Uh, but uh, the good thing about this is that he is most likely Specs. So I can get the free switch into my Cabalion. And not only get up the Stealth Rock on the switch, but uh, also go for whatever I choose on this Scizor. Now, he was probably expecting me to switch here, fearing the superpower. Uh, but in all honesty, I didn't feel that I needed the Goat too much anymore. So, you know, I'd got Stealth Rock up and it was fine. So I decided to stay in and go for the T-Wave. Maybe get a Parala Hacks or something. Or maybe even, you know, just catch something else as he switches or predicts or whatever. But I got the uh, Sizzle Thunder Wave did. It is paralyzed and now he goes with U-turn, which does absolutely nothing to me. Goes out into um, his uh, Groudon, which is a Rotom actually, because I uh, almost got uh, confused there, but obviously wouldn't have a Groudon in a standard match, would you now? Jesus. Uh, but uh, Rotom here is going to just laugh around and do whatever the hell it likes, go for Hydro Pump. I'm not worried, um, and the reason I went for Taunt here is because in the stream I thought I saw Rotom have lefties, so I thought it was a defensive one. Turns out it's Scarfed with Hydro Pump, so that kind of doesn't play into my plans at all, and uh, unfortunately uh, for him, he's going to miss the Hydro Pump, but uh, at least I know now what it is, so I kind of have a better idea as uh, for next time. But I don't want to stay in and take another Hydro Pump, so I'm going to switch out and go to my Hydreigon to hopefully take one. He actually goes out into his Scizor, thinking that he he probably uh, wanted to take some like close combat or something from me. I didn't really know what he was going to do. But um, he went out into it, I guess, maybe to stop Paralyzed. Maybe he predicted a Thunder Wave or something. And uh, Hydreigon comes in, and the problem that uh, my Hydreigon has is it doesn't have a fire move, so I can't actually threaten that Scizor in any way. But the good thing is that it's a Hydreigon, so the threat of a fire move is in imminent, just regardless of whether I have one or not. Uh, and so it's basically good that uh, he obviously thought that, and I got a free substitute on the Switch to Dragonite, which now that multi scale is broken, I'll be able to take it out with the Dragon Balls. Now, this is a weird uh, Hydreigon set, it's a bulky set with a substitute and roost. And then dual stab, so I have Dark Pulse and Dragon Pulse. I should really switch that. I should change it to Dragon Pulse plus Fire Move. Uh, whatever Fire Move, I guess, to choose. But Fire Blast is a bit risky, but I don't know. Because, uh, I know, Dark Pulse and Dragon Pulse doesn't really do the work, especially when you're facing off against Steel types. That's uh, a bit of a problem. But, uh, fortunately... Um, I'm able to take out the Dragonite, in comes the Azelf, and I think that it's probably just going to U-turn straight out. But I, on the off chance that it wanted to stay in and do something weird, like taunt me to prevent me subbing up, he is going to, um, I mean, I'm going to go for the Dark Pulse, and uh, he goes into the Scizor, so that's definitely not going to do a lot to the Scizor at all. Um, it's kind of uh, crippled, I guess, but... Um, it's still annoying that uh, it's still alive because it still has bullet punch and bullet punch is always threatening, always a problem. So I'm going to go into probably my bulkiest thing, which is my Rapushin, my Conkelda here. And uh, I'm thinking, unfortunately for me, actually, this is a sub punch one. So the problem with that is that I don't really have the room to get a substitute off, especially if he's bullet punching me all the time. So I decided to go for the Mark Punch. I know it's a probable two hit KO at this point. So I'm going to do it and see how much it does. And it looks like two hit KO after that. Fortunately, he gets paralyzed, so he's not able 
able to get another bullet punch off, which leaves uh, me in just over half HP. I should be able to take him out from this range, hopefully not taking any more damage from the bullet punch, but alas, ladies and gentlemen, he lives, like, somehow. I don't even know what damage variation went on there, but he did with a tiny minuscule amount, and uh, unfortunately, I take the bullet punch hit, which I didn't really want to take, but I took it anyway, so hey, that's what you're going to do sometimes. Life shits on you, and you have to take the consequences, but there you go. Mac Punch will finish him off, though, and Sizzle is no longer a problem. I can uh, not have to worry about it anymore, so fantastic. Uh, he goes into a poodle, which is Jolteon. What I really should have done here is I should have gone to Ditto. Ditto basically would have taken the uh, Thunderbolt very nicely. I didn't really want to though just because on the off chance he predicted that and went for like a Shadow Ball or something and I wouldn't really appreciate it too much. Um, but I stay in with the Repulsion but the good thing about this now is that he is locked into Thunderbolt so I can go straight into Jolteon, uh, Trace, uh, not Trace, uh, uh, Imposter into him, get the Volt Absorb onto myself obviously, I'll speed him with the Scarf, go for the Shadow Ball and do as much damage as I can. Doesn't kill him but gets a special defense drop but he stays in as as you can see, meaning that, you know, he obviously, uh, probably, I don't even know what he was doing there. I guess he didn't think that I got Volt Absorb after Imposter, but I do. Imposter copies everything, even stat boost, so there you go. Uh, so yeah, I'm able to go for another Shadow Ball freely as he switches into his Rotom. I guess he wanted to keep his Jolteon around because it's uh, quite a useful player for him in this late game. And, uh, you know, it'll, it'll do good things. So, uh, obviously, not going to kill it with another Shadow Ball. I'm going to switch straight out to Hydreigon to take the Hydro Pump. Uh, and uh, kind of Death Fodder at this point. If he misses a Hydro Pump, great. Uh, if not, then, you know, Hydreigon kind of served its purpose anyway. And, uh, you know, killed Dragonite and did all that good stuff. So I'm not too bothered about it. I let it die here, and he doesn't miss a single Hydro Pump, so he is going to take me out cleanly. Uh, but of course, he's now locked into Hydro Pump, which means, ladies and gentlemen, I can simply go into my Haxorus, be able to take the resisted hit, and be able to go for the Choice Banded Earthquake, because... If you uh, don't remember, Haxorus has Mold Breaker, which means that Levitate will be nullified. So uh, he has Azelf, he has Rotom, and he has Jolteon. So none of those three Pokemon want to take an Earthquake. It is very safe for me to lock myself into it, so that's exactly what I do. And uh, there you go. He uh, goes into Jolteon and dies to Stealth Rock, actually, on Switch, and so didn't even have to kill it. Uh, in comes Azelf, uh, which I don't think can really do much to me, so I'm going to stay in and just go for the uh, Earthquake. I don't think it can kill me. Then he pulls out a normal Gem Explosion out of the bag, and I'm like, well, ball. Uh, at least uh, I still have stuff left to deal with the Rotom, um, but Haxorus is dead, so that's kind of unfortunate. Uh, I was hoping maybe it would be able to do some uh, Mold Breaker Earthquaking shenanigans, but alas, it goes down to the explosion uh, hit in my face. Uh, in comes Rotom though, and at this point I have two options. One, I can go into Ditto, uh, turn into Rotom, outspeed him and kill him with a Thunderbolt. Or two, I can go into my Goat, take the Hydro Pump and go for the Close Combat. I decide to choose two because I like the Goat more. And, uh, you know, I, I just want it to kill with Close Combat, so that's what I do. Let it kill with the Close Combat. Rotom is dead, that is going to be the game. And uh, that's a narrow 2-0 victory, so it was, a, it was a pretty interesting one. It wasn't really a team that I used, I kind of just threw things together that I just recently salved up. Because obviously Black 2 White 2 had some uh, nice changes to it and some new things that required my salving attention. Or should I say genning? Because I have to use fucking Poker Gen right now. Poker Gen is literally the worst fucking shit in the universe. Anyone who says it's better than Sav is mentally retarded. Cough, wild chase, cough. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time. If you enjoyed this battle, feel free to check out my own channel. Uh, that will be in the description. And otherwise, uh, yeah, goodbye. Thanks for watching and. Sub the mosh pit and all that good shit, and Ferris is cool. Goodbye.